Joe Lewis had a reputation rare amongst fighters. He was viewed as a modest, hardworking, and clean living person who followed the rules of the game, as well as the rules for a black man in the game at his time in history. The American white press promoted him as positively as possible for the times, nicknaming him the Mahogany Mauler, Chocolate Chopper, Coffee-Colored K.O. King, and the Brown Bomber. Lewis was considered a defender of the people by much of the international community when he defeated the Italian heavyweight Prima Carnera in 1935, an act that symbolized a defeat for the Mussolini regime. As number one contender for the heavyweight title, Lewis was matched with the former heavyweight champion Max Schmeling in 1936, but suffered his first professional loss when he received a knockout at the hands of the German in round 12. Schmeling expected that after his victory over Lewis, he would get a title shot against James Braddock, the Cinderella man who had recently won the title away from Max Baer. But Lewis's manager, Mike Jacobs, had already struck a deal with Braddock's manager for a fight between the Brown Bomber and the heavyweight champion, a deal that left Schmeling without a chance at the title. On the night of June 22, 1937, after a round one knockdown by Braddock, Lewis inflicted constant punishment on the champion that resulted in a knockout by Lewis in the eighth round when the referee called the fight. Despite being awarded the championship, Lewis never felt that it vindicated him from the loss against Schmeling in 36. Lewis held on to the title against three opponents in 37 and was finally matched with the German in what would become one of the most famous boxing matches of all time. A few weeks before the battle, President Franklin Roosevelt told Lewis that the country needed muscles like yours to beat Germany. The Nazis, who had touted the victory by Schmeling over Lewis in 36 as proof of Aryan superiority, were assured that the prize money won by their fighter would be used to build tanks in Germany. Though Schmeling was publicized by the Nazis, the fighter didn't stand behind them politically and never became a party member. The two fighters met for their rematch on June 22, 1938 in Yankee Stadium. Joe Lewis left pick with two straight left to the chin. Both of them light, but as the men flinch, Joe Lewis tries to get over two hard lefts, and Max ties him up in the breakaway clean. On the far side of the ring now, Max with his back to the rope, and Lewis hooks the left to Max's head quickly, and shoots over a hard right to Max's head. Lewis, a left to Max's jaw, a right to his head. Max shoots a hard right to Lewis. Lewis for the old one-two, the first to left and then the right. He's landed more blows in this one round. They did land it in a five rounds of the other fight. And there, Max Schmeling caught him with his guard down and tossed that right hand to Lewis's jaw. But Lewis was going away with the punch at the time. Now Max is backing away against the ropes. Lewis is following him and watching for that chance. He is crowding Schmeling. Schmeling is not slipping around very much, but his face is already marked. And they stepped into a fast punch and at close range. Lewis fights desperately to bring up a left to the jaw and a right to the body. And coming out of that clinch, he got over a hard right and then stabbed Max with a good straight left jab. And Max backed away and missed the right. Lewis then cracked him with two straight lefts to the face and brought over that hard right to the head. High on the temple. And Max tied him up for the clinch and broke ground. His back against the ropes again there. Not too close to the ropes. Lewis out. And Lewis missed with a left swing. But in close, brought up a hard right over the right to the jaw. And... Again, a right to the body, a left hook, a right to the head, a left to the head, a right. Schmeling is going down. But he held to his feet, held to the rope, looked to his corner in helplessness, and Schmeling is down. Schmeling is down. The count is four. It, and he's up, and Lewis, right and left to the head, a left to the jaw, a right to the head. And Donovan is watching carefully. Lewis measures him. Right to the body, a left up to the jaw, and Schmeling is down. The count is five, five, six, seven, eight. The men are in the ring. The fight is over on a technical knockout. The fight lasted two minutes and four seconds. Schmeling was knocked down three times, after which the referee stopped the fight and his trainer threw in the towel. Lewis continued to fight into the 1940s, and after a series of insignificant battles, 
participated in another of the greatest heavyweight bouts of all time against Billy Kahn. But Lewis's fame was to far outlast his career as a fighter. Lewis was popular and held in great respect around the world and participated in many charitable fights. He enlisted as a private in the army in 1942 and became a spokesman for this country against the Nazis. Never before had white Americans embraced a black man as their representative in the world. Because of his largesse and his innocence about money, Lewis endured IRS problems until the end of his life. He died virtually penniless in 1981, with his funeral paid for by his longtime friend and former competitor, Max Schmeling.